Do you think your youth ministry is at the point where you need an intern? Well, today we're talking all about why you might need an intern, how to hire them, and how to train them. Welcome to the Ministry Coach Podcast, where we bring you weekly tips and tactics to help you fast track the growth and health of your youth ministry. My name is Jeff Lascola, and this is Kristen Lascola. And maybe you do, maybe you don't have an intern, but today we're talking all about interns, when to hire, when to use them, how to use them, why to use them, all that good stuff. Yeah. And I remember the first time this conversation came up in my youth ministry, I was just kind of getting started maybe a year in and I, it never even crossed my mind. And our campus pastor came up to me one day and he's like, I think you should hire an intern. And I even have someone in mind for you. And I think this would be a really great thing. And I was like, I can do that. (laughs) I could have an intern because we were a small at the time offsite campus. And I just didn't really think the church would see it as like a justified thing, you know? And I was like, okay. And it was one of my volunteers who was already in the ministry. And he was like a young 20 something like me and had a lot of energy and enthusiasm. The kids loved him. And he, my senior or campus pastor was like, why don't you just pitch it to him and see if he's interested And I did, we went on a road trip, remember? And he was there and I was like, do you want to be my intern? (laughs) And he was like, what does that look like? And so he did. And that was the first intern I ever had. And at the time, our ministry for our church was pretty small. You know, it was probably in that 25 range Mm -hmm. um, of students. And he came on as a paid intern, very, I mean, you we all know what paid intern means. It's like not a lot at all. <laughs> this uh, might cover your gas one way. <laughs> well, California <laughs> laws have changed. And so churches actually have to <laughs> compensate people differently now. Yeah. But at, this was years ago. So at the time it was kind of like just up to the church's discretion. And um, he didn't make a lot, but he did make something. And uh, he made an impact. He did. And that's what's most important. And if you're listening, you made an impact. (laughs) You know who you are. So today we're going to talk about, well, maybe you're in the position of you haven't had an intern yet and you've thought about it and you've heard other youth, youth pastors kind of throw that around a little bit. And you're like, what about me? When is it time? So let's talk about interns because they are a huge benefit to you, to your ministry, and to the future of your church. So why? Why would we want an intern to begin with? So number one, um, it is for the future of your ministry and for the church. So you can only do so much. And an intern is really a great way. We have this whole episode on what it means to duplicate yourself so that your leadership reach goes further. And it's amazing when you have like a partner in ministry, somebody that's like your right hand man or woman, you can go so much further. There's that like ancient proverb. It's not (laughs) from the book of Proverbs, but it says, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. And I'm like, that is so true when it comes to ministry because so many youth pastors burn out. I think in, in some part due to loneliness in Mm. ministry and loneliness at the top, you know, and when you're doing everything and everything is filtering through you and every decision and every piece of the ministry, it's very lonely and daunting Mm. in a way that's just soul sucking. And so like an intern is sort of like your ministry, like spouse, like you do this thing together. (laughs) You're like a team and you lean on each other in like the day-to-day operations, but also like think of camps and activities and all nighters and events and just having that someone to lean on. You know, I talk a lot about how small groups need to have a two liter system. And part of the reason we talk about it is because 
adults need support from other adults. Mm. And when you're just in a room full of high school or junior hires and you're like just the buck stops here person week after week after week, it's a little grading. Right. And so the same for you as a youth pastor, when you don't have another adult who gets it to lean on or to process with, or like, okay, this happened. What should we do? I'm an extrovert. And so being able to have at least one other person without burdening a volunteer with that kind of stuff, that is your go-to. It gives you that longevity in ministry because you've had someone to partner with and talk things through. It's good to have that sounding board too, with when you have come up with these ideas and, or should we do this event? How would that look? And hopefully a lot of you guys have really supportive senior pastors or campus pastors, but at the same time, it's not their ministry. So as much as they might be involved and like, yeah, sure, I'll be your sounding board. Yeah. It's different than having someone like arm in arm Invested. in your ministry. That's like, you're going to do this event with me. And like, you're going to be a part of this where your senior pastor might be like, that's a great idea or that's a horrible idea or maybe you should do this or that. Great, but they're probably not going to be there. And it'll kind of just yeah. be a conversation. And also it's like, how many times do you want to go? Well, and you can't fully person? explain. Like, you know, when you try to like bring a, a problem to someone who's not in yeah. the trenches, like they don't fully get it. And to either. bring your senior pastor into the trenches, you'd be having daily meetings, <laughs> like hours and hours and hours. And they'd probably be like, dude, I got to get other things done. Right. Like go do your job, be competent, <laughs> stop bothering me. And think of it for the future of the church in general too. I think that churches need to take a look at, are we developing leaders within our walls? Mm. So I think some churches are just a little stagnant in that area of, if you're a children's pastor, you should have children's ministry interns and teach them how to do children's ministry. If if you were to leave tomorrow or um, die heaven forbid, <laughs> or like, would everything just stop right. because nobody else knows what they're doing? And that breathes such life into a church when people are brought in and given opportunities to use their gifts and to grow in their leadership and learn new skills. And that's what happened with me. Somebody just said, I kind of like you. You seem like you have some potential. Why don't I teach you how to do? And I just remember my first day, like we're using a paper cutter, like, okay. <laughs> like, and it was skills I had never used before, but it was, and I'll talk a little more about that in a minute of what do we teach interns, but it's the future of the church churches in every area should be creating leaders yeah. constantly. Worship people should be developing up and coming worship people, children's up and coming children's people, student ministries, like what we do, even in terms of hospitality, your ushers, your greeters, your coffee team, whatever, everyone should be mentoring somebody mm -hmm. to learn skills. Like if, if, and I think a lot of times churches are like, well, like we want let, let people just come and enjoy and receive. And there's a time for that when they're brand new, but we really got to move people from being a spiritual consumer to a spiritual contributor, because this is all of our family. Like this yeah. is the family of God. It's not just me because I get a paycheck. Like we're all in this, my capacity will be different, but it's really a push to like get people serving and learning ministry. So when do you know you need one? So you might think your ministry is too small for one. So I mentioned, you know, for my church, a youth group of 25 is, is small and si and relative to the size of our church. That was about the time they kind of approached me. You should have an intern. This would make your ministry healthier. And it did. It made my ministry healthier. But if you are like 25, that's a lot right. based on your church. That's, I, I don't, I hope to get to 25 someday. Every church is relative. Size is relative to the size of the church. So if you're like, I only have five or I only have 10 or whatever, it doesn't matter because again, think of the small group system we talked about. Everyone, even in a small group, if you have a small group of eight students, you should still have a two leader system. Mm -hmm. So for your entire ministry, why wouldn't you have a two leader system? It's just healthier. Now you might not be able to justify paying them <laughs> right away, but if you can get somebody on board and say, Hey, I'm going to bring you into ministry. I want to teach you what I do. I mean, I can't pay you right now, but 
that could be a possibility in the future as our church grows. But even so, there's just so much potential. And like you're basically giving free mentorship and leadership to this person. Now, if they see a value in that, they might say yes. If they don't necessarily see a value in that, you know, who knows that com- how that conversation will go, but it's at least worth an ask, even if you can't pay them. So basically what I'm saying is you don't have to wait until you can pay someone to justify bringing them in mm-hmm. As an intern, a lot of people may never get to the point where they can pay somebody, right. but that doesn't mean there's not somebody willing to take that role on for sure. And there's other ways to thank people without like a paycheck and different languages. Gracias. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you mean? Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> what I meant. You're just, it's like you're in my brain. Great, Jeff. You're, you're so special. Uh, yes, I am. <laughs> That was pretty good, actually. (laughs) Um, You know, like there's ways to show your appreciation to people Mm. as you go and all of that, but also giving them significant roles. So so let's say you get an intern um, and how are you going to start them out? Like what should an intern do? Because maybe you have your volunteer team and you're like, okay, well, what's the difference? So volunteers can serve in a lot of roles outside of just being small group leaders, but that only goes so far. So an intern would typically come into the office early, especially on program nights. So for example, my intern, I feel like he's sort of moved past the point of intern, but he's like probably a director now, uh, cause he does a lot more than when he started. So let's say my intern comes in at three o'clock on Tuesdays. Tuesday is our program day and our leader meeting is at six o'clock. So that's really only three hours from three to six. I get him and we get to work together. So what you start people out on is let's just learn the skills of navigating this church in this office, right? So you teach them, here's how to use the copier. Here's how to use this. Here's how to do that so that they can actually perform work. And that shouldn't take too long. And if there's any other staff training that they need to go through, our interns get like a staff email address so that they can stay in the loop with what's going on at the church and communicate with the correct departments because they're going to be working on projects for me. And so they have to be able to contact people within the church. So if you can get them a staff email address, that is huge and give them a space to work. So my intern has his own desk and computer and all that kind of stuff. So then you start figuring out what are their natural gifts and then what do you need to teach them? So you can start small with things like, Hey, just let's work on setup and tear down together. This is just how a Tuesday night works. We have to set up this, this, we have to turn these things on. Then we have to open this door. Like just, all right, now you get the idea. You know how to work in the office. You know how to set up, you know how to tear down, you get program a little bit of the behind the scenes stuff. And then you can start moving into some more leadership skills, youth pastor skills. So I always like to start people just emceeing with me. So we both have a mic and we're both doing announcements and the icebreaker and the game and kind of leading together, just that MC portion. And then once you feel like they're getting kind of comfortable on stage, you can have them lead a game on their own. So leading it from the front or picking the game and preparing the game and all of that. Once they're getting good on stage, you can start to teach them how to speak. And that is a great skill for you as a youth pastor. So this is sort of that symbiotic thing of like, it sharpens your skills to be able to to have to teach yeah. somebody else and making sure that you are <laughs> continuing to be that like player coach. Like mm. I play the game, but I'm also coaching you through the game right. of speaking. That, so I saw that accountability is like, well, am I doing these things too? For sure. <laughs> and like starting with a small one. So I always, our weekend messages are a lot longer than our Tuesday night messages. So I will start them on a Tuesday night, like intro message. So Mm. that's typically like a 10 to 12 minute message. And then make sure you are taking notes as they speak so that you can now coach them afterwards. So, Hey, you know, you could have had a little more energy here. This was really great. Or, you know, I think that you're, you went a little long, whatever. I mean, you're just really dissecting what they talk about. 
And then you could move them up to a weekend message if they're showing some promise and some gifts and all that, and then teach them how to write curriculum. So I'm coaching somebody right now through this. And I told him like, okay, well, whatever your weekend message is, you have to turn that into a talk sheet for our small groups on Tuesday night. And there it's, he's getting stuck on that. Like, that's a hard thing for him right now. Like what? Okay. Here's my talk. And I'm like, well, now your talk needs to be a discussion. So how do you take it further? And we're really sitting down working on that skill with him. When you're saying curriculum, you mean like a talk sheet going yeah. You're not saying like, I'm going to write out 365 days worth of. No, I use, <laughs> yeah, that's how I use curriculum is the talk sheet that you're going to send to your small okay. group leaders to use in their small groups. And whoever speaks on the weekend, they're responsible for doing that because it's based off of their message. Gotcha. So that's kind of what I'm coaching him through right now is he's a really good speaker, but he's having a hard time turning those into talk sheets. So that's great because that's like, Oh, let's get you go into that next level. You could teach them how to plan events. Um, uh, one of my interns right now, she's fantastic at booking things, signing contracts, doing the financial aspect of things, getting the best deals. Like she is so organized with that. And so, you know, I've taught her like, Hey, here's how to negotiate like the bus rates and this Mm -hmm. and that and whatever. So we're teaching, you're basically duplicating yourself so that your ministry is reaching further every single week. Mm -hmm. Because if I was just to sit, I, I know how to book an all nighter. It's not that I don't know how to do it but she's really good at it. And she's my intern. I'm going to give her all that. It's not that I can't teach, but it's like, well, he likes to teach. He has a gift and what a benefit to our ministry to have more than one voice going on the weekend and midweek and, um, having a different type of impact than I could have. And I love the male female thing. Mm -hmm. You know, most male youth pastors are always looking for a female to develop into a speaker. I'm always looking for a guy because I, obviously I'm the primary teacher. So it's, it benefits that whole ministry of like making sure people are going, making sure your ministry can go further and have a greater impact. So those are just some ideas of what you can be teaching them to do. Then if they have a very specific skill to them, hone that in and use it for your ministry. One of my interns is so good at video and graphics, and he's like meticulous and things he I mean, it's beautiful, like Mm -hmm. his videos. So he's really good at it. That wasn't a job description. I said, well, to be my intern, you have to be good at video. It's like, oh, you just happen to be really good at video. Let's use it for our youth ministry. So if they have anything like that, like bring it in. My other, the guy I'm coaching on the talk sheets, he's just really good at building stuff. So he'll come into the room of like, oh, I can fix that for you. Or, oh, should we like replace those lights and different things like that? So it's these skills now. See, now the impact of your ministry is growing and things are getting better and improving because it's not just you. And so keep this in mind. Your ministry will always be better (laughs) when it's not just you. Right. But it takes a little time and it takes a little legwork. And I think that's why people get a little discouraged because they're like, it's just easier if I do it. Right. You know, because some pastors are control freaks and they want everything to be the way they want it. Um, But when you work side by side with people that you share enough chemistry with, they kind of catch your vibe. And eventually, maybe they don't do things exactly the way you do them, but they do it similarly enough that it's not like this fractured team. Mm -hmm. You know, my intern said to me after this particular camp we just did this summer, he's like, this was his second year with me. And he goes, I feel like this year I've, I've worked with you long enough to where I feel like I could make a lot of decisions that I, I didn't have to come to you. I knew what you would already say. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, Whoa, like what a cool thing that that is like duplication. Yeah, It's like, it took two years um, and he's been doing a great job, but he relied on me a lot more heavily the last two years. And now he has that confidence to make certain calls or certain decisions of like, well, this is how we do things. Or this is how, what Kristen would say if she was here and he can just take the ball and run with it. Mm -hmm. and doesn't have to now run everything by me. And now our impact's going further because I can be doing something else and impacting somewhere else and let him impact somewhere else. It's like, I love the divide and conquer thing. And so 
if you could even just get one person on your team to start training. So where do these people come from? And I think that's a really big question that youth pastors have like, sounds great, but like, where do they come from? Right. Well, if you're brand new in ministry, it might take a little while. My very first intern was a super volunteer. It was just a guy who was on my volunteer team. He was a small group leader, young twenties, still living at home, had another job, but had a little flexibility mm. and time to just be able to come in early one day a week and then help me on the weekend services. So that was where he came from. Currently, one of my interns is a former student. She came up through the ministry and now she's all grown up. So sometimes you have to wait a little while and they come back and serve with you. And the other one was like a friend of my volunteers. You know, he knew people who were working with me and they recommended mm -hmm. him. And so you never know where people are going to come from. I, oh, and then I have a couple others that are actually seniors Mm -hmm. um, in high school. So if you have a junior or a senior that you see some leadership potential, that's not too young to get them started. You could even team teach with them. I have a sophomore. He's so precious. He came up to me at church this week and he's like, Kristen, I'm really into the story of King David right now and Solomon and the fall of Solomon and blah, blah, blah. Could I teach, you know, junior high on a weekend? I'm like, well, let's talk about what you have so far. And maybe we team teach together. Um, when I hear kind of the direction you're thinking of, he's already ready to get his feet wet. And, do, and I mean, who knows where this is going to go? Yeah. If you have a really young one, you're like, I don't know. Like, I don't feel comfortable team teach with them, sit down with them. If people want to serve, find a place, don't shut them down. Never ever say you're not ready. Mm. Find a place where they can. We have some students that they want to serve, but because of like where they're at spiritually or emotionally, they're not really ready to be small group leaders, but they're ready to come into ministry and help set up or um, the kids love them. And so they worship with the kids and hang out with the kids. They might do some childcare for the leader. Like there's just people who you can find a place yeah. if they're ready and willing, find a place for them. And so you might have people right now that you just, maybe as you're listening, like names are going into your head. And if not be intentional about it or start praying about it. You know, when I have a need in my ministry that I want to fill and I just don't know how I'm going to fill it. I just start praying about it. Like, God, I don't know where this person is going to come from. I have no names in mind, but I'd really like someone to fill this position or that position. And the last time I prayed, like literally four days later, I had the, every single thing I had asked for. It was amazing. Um, I noticed you didn't say win the lottery in that prayer because we did not win the lottery. <laughs> we also didn't play the lottery, so that could have been why. That maybe. <laughs> Put that on the top of your list. Next time. <laughs> I don't even know what to say to that. <laughs> so anyways, it's just this thing of like, there could be people there. And if you haven't dipped your toe into the intern uh, thing and start developing leaders, now might be a really good time. Yeah. An important thing too, is when you're developing that leader, that intern underneath you, um, you can actually not be there, you know, like, cause you get sick. You know, Ooh, that's a you, very good point. You don't want to have it be like, Hey, uh, I'm sick. So Cancel we're not youth having group. youth group, wah, you know? Wah, and what if that. that's like a serious illness and it's like, well, I guess we're not having youth group for a couple months. Or what if you want to go on, on vacation? vacation? Yeah. Like, yeah, those are things like I don't miss a ton of Tuesdays, but when I do, I'm perfectly confident. You know, I set them up for success. Right. You know, I usually pull more than my weight on those nights of like, okay, I'm doing a lot to prepare you. Right. You just got to run the ball now. Just go till 9 p.m. when all the kids are gone. And yeah, so that we can have the option to go on vacation or take a sick day or whatever it might be. Canceling youth group is the worst. Right. Do everything possible to not cancel youth group. And maybe you don't want to teach every week. or You know, it's just, it's, that is a really good, yeah. uh, I'm and glad we you have, brought that uh, We have people reaching out to us a lot of times that, you know, throw around the title like interim. I'm the interim 
youth pastor. And sometimes it's just because maybe whoever the youth pastor was there before quit abruptly. It's like, well, I'm not going to be the youth pastor, but currently I am the youth pastor because no one else is. But we have other people reaching out and it's heartbreaking, but they say the youth pastor left. They usually don't give the reason why and I don't go into it, but they will say, uh, I'm, I'm a volunteer and I'm taking on this role. Why wasn't there an intern? Why wasn't there, there somebody that right. was able a to do that? Two. And a lot of times it's like, not even like I was a volunteer. It's like, I'm a parent that I just thought, oh no, now we don't have a youth group. You know, it's like, oh, yeah. that's so, what a missed opportunity. You know, and not saying like, so you can set it up and just quit at any time, but you just hope that there, if there's ever anything that were to come up, that there would be somebody to step in and at least fill that gap confidently mm -hmm. and that you wouldn't have to like, well, I guess that's, that's it for youth group. We're not doing that until, you know, they hire somebody else. Like what a bummer. Or yeah. even if it's just a few weeks or whatever. The other thing is I always thought as a Christian, my biggest goal was not so much to be like, I want to um, bring somebody else to know Jesus. You know, I want to bring somebody to know Jesus who then they bring somebody to know Jesus. And like, you know, like mm. I want to, yeah. Like disciples just, making disciples. Exactly. Making disciples. And I feel yeah. like that is our goal or should be our goal as leaders, as youth pastors, is that I, I think a success, a sign is of a successful leader in youth ministry as a youth pastor is did you create a new youth pastor? Maybe it's once you leave and they take over your role, but have you built up somebody to the point where they now can be a youth pastor at a different church? Mm -hmm. Not saying like competing, but if they were to move to another town or whatever, right. and all that you instilled in them and all the time and effort you poured into them, were they then able to be a youth pastor somewhere else? I think that's a huge, huge win. It shows where you're at as a youth pastor. I agree. A hundred percent. All right. Is that good? We, we cover you. Are you guys enough? good? Did you get it? Yeah. Can we move on? Uh, no, we'll just do a quick uh, question of the day here, which I think is kind of a funny one, but uh, what kind of old person do you want to be? Um, like, how do you see yourself as an old person? So cranky. No, <laughs> I saw this like 80 year old, like vegan bodybuilder. And I thought, <laughs> Ooh, like I want to be really strong and funny. And I want to be the kind of person, you know, like when old people don't care what people think of them, like they just kind of yeah. say kooky right. things, which is kind of scary, but yeah, like, I don't want to be like, uh, but like, just like, just say things and people just go, Ugh. Crazy Kristen, old Maurice. She's a kook. <laughs> Something like that. I want to have the most comfortable lazy boy chair in the world and watch movies and sports. Wow, my we're not going to get along at all when we're old. And <laughs> that oh, takes no. up most of my time. But to be healthy and active and be able to do the things I want to do the way that I want to do them. I want to travel. Yeah, okay, maybe. Get off but the lazy but boy. I need to be active healthy you know all that that's who i hope i am as a, as an elderly person so. <laughs> sounds like you just gave a speech and that and that is who i'd like to be as an elderly person all right let's Thank do a for community listening. comment of the day this is from jacob shoop says shoop, he says we get <laughs> i thought that too and i wasn't gonna say it i'm sure he gets that a million times sorry i'm so cliche <laughs> he says i love y'all i've been a youth pastor for two years now and when i started i found this podcast it has transformed my youth group i started with five spiritually immature youth and now have 15 youth that are consistently growing and living out their faith good work well good work for you Yay, too Jacob. Jacob. thank you so much for reaching out and letting us know that it's great to hear from you guys if you've been impacted by this podcast in any way good or bad uh, <laughs> feel free to reach out and let us I'm know i'm not we in a place that. to receive that right now <laughs> if it's bad just email it's the us end of summer i'm tired <laughs> hey guys thank you guys so much well that was weird Thank you guys so much for watching and listening, and, and we'll, we'll see, see you next, next time. time. Is your youth group at the point where the... Is your youth group at the room? Today, we're talking about how to get one, what to do with them, everything. How to hire one, what to do with them, and what? Today, we're talking about how to hire them and what to do with them.